How's it going everybody? I'm Lox and today I'm starting a full tutorial series. This is going to be a complete beginner tutorial. We're going to download the file, unzip it, and get right into UPBGE. To make things easier, everything you'll need for this tutorial series will be in the description below. So starting out, let's go to UPBGE and go to the download page. Once you're in the download page, you'll see that you will automatically be in the UPBGE 0.3 plus section. The version that I'm going to be using for this tutorial series is UPBGE 0.36.1. For anybody running on a 64-bit system, the download is right there. If you want to download it for 32-bit, you can go to the missed downloads and click here. This will bring you to a bunch of different UPBGE versions. Now that we have all that taken care of, let's close our browser. Now that you have this file downloaded, you'll want to make sure that you have either 7-zip or WinRAR or something like that. The Windows default unzip sometimes doesn't work and you'll end up with a file that doesn't open. So right clicking, show more options, 7-zip, and extract here. Boo 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 doo 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 done. And now you have an unzipped UPBGE. All you want is the Blender application. Open that up and this will launch UPBGE. When you first open the program, you'll be introduced with the splash screen. For us, just click off to the side and it will close. Now we're left with a blank Blender scene. You'll notice if you've ever used Blender before that this is all pretty much basic Blender stuff. Everything is in the same place. I am also using a vanilla version of UPBGE and Blender 3.6. Everything will be the same for both of us. Now let's go to Edit, Preferences, and we just want to go to Add-ons. In the Add-ons section, type in Nodes, and make sure that Game Engine Logic Nodes Plus is enabled. We're going to be using this quite a bit. Uh, if you have to, install or update UPBGE modules, and that'll make sure that all of your Python modules are up to date. Another add-on that I like to use is Node Wrangler. If you don't have this already, then I would make sure that that is checked. We're going to be using that as well for doing textures. After you do that, you can click on these three lines, save preferences, and close that window. If you've never used Blender before, hover over the edge of a docked window, you can drag it out. If you go to the very top where it says render, you will be introduced to the EV rendering engine. This is the engine we are going to be making our game in, and you will have some other preferences. The embedded start, if you press P on your keyboard, it will start the game. And if you press escape, that will kill the runtime. Other things, standalone start, this will open a standalone program, and this will be the resolution that it opens as. If you click this, then it just opens up a game window like so. Perfect. Let's close that. Now if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that we have debug properties, frame rate and profile, and physics visualization. Physics visualization is going to be later on. We will be using that at some point, but don't worry about it for now. The one you want to have enabled is debug properties and frame rate and profile. This way we can see what properties we are using and what those properties are doing and see what the frame rate of our game is running at. All this other stuff for rendering, we won't worry about for now. For a lot of this stuff, we will be using a different method go up above the rendering preferences we have a legend and this will have all of our collections inside of it just for starting out double click collection and rename it to main for now and everything inside this collection is just what's inside the scene so we have a light a cube and a camera let's right click in the empty space make a new collection and we'll call this collection assets this is where we'll hold all of our assets that we're going to add Select the cube and press M. This will allow us to move it to our asset collection. So move the cube to the asset collection. If you look in the hierarchy, you will see that the cube is now under assets. Make sure that if you are gonna add stuff or import things, make sure that the collection you wanna import them to is selected. Otherwise, you'll end up with a bunch of assets all over the place and it gets messy. Alrighty, that is pretty much all for the setup. So now let's go into adding assets. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be using an asset pack made by the creator, SM. I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> uh, this is going to be the 3D Leap Land Asset Pack. I will have a link to this in the description. This is a pretty cool asset pack, so if you want to, you can support them on their itch as well. I like to keep everything organized. You can see that I have this in the UPBGE full tutorial folder, and I'm going to create a new folder and call this Assets. Then just bring your assets into the Asset folder, and we can unzip it. Doo -doo 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 now that we have the assets downloaded and ready to go, we'll go to File, and since we're using Blender, we can just append these files. So we'll go to our file, Assets, and we can open kit.blend. When we open this up, go to Collection, and just select all these collections, and Append. Now we have all the assets. 
go into render mode and we will see are they textured they are not inside of our assets collection we have all of our decoration assets enemy assets ground assets item assets walls and etc in fact let's just delete the default cube goodbye <laughs> going into the shading mode we can look at all of our stuff we do have to fix these textures so go to the shading window and in here click on an asset we have the palette png we will select texture and palette so fix all those uh go into palette texture and all the metallics are fixed now that we have fixed the textures go to layout again if we go into the corner of the screen we can drag down we can select the icon on the top left and we're going to open up the asset browser this will give you an asset browser similar to unity or unreal engine and what we can do go to preferences open up preferences once again go to files and paths go down to user library then create a new folder call this game open this folder up and hit accept so it's going to be looking for the assets in this folder which is going to be our blend file save our preferences and close this now go to file and we're going to want to save our game so just click save we haven't made a save yet so it's going to automatically save as now navigate to the game folder make sure that we're in the right place yep and for me i'm just going to call this tutorial game select the assets that you want to add to the library then right click in the hierarchy and mark as asset we can go to our asset file go to current file and we will see all of our assets loaded up in this now just do this for everything now that we have all these assets in this asset library we don't need this asset collection anymore so we are just going to hide it by clicking this little check mark this will exclude the layer from view and from render let's make a new collection and we're going to call this level so this is going to be the level that we have our current player in in fact delete this camera in fact delete every uh we'll leave the we'll leave the sun to make everything easier to see select the light and turn it to a sun right now it's on a thousand which is way too high just set that to one and that'll be good for now now we can just click and drag our assets right in if you press N on your keyboard, you'll be able to see all of the location data, scale data, and rotation data. If you click and drag down, you'll be able to select all these and just set them to all zero. That way they're centered in the world. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and design a little playground and I will be back when I'm done. <laughs> 